I'm not about to help the hood out. None of these things because I'm not smart. But I paid money to get a C. Look at this. Do you see this C? Now make no sense. It's true when people say C's get degrees. Yes, they do. And apparently they get you into medical school too. Because hey, look at me now. Hey y'all, welcome back to Made to Medicine with Vix, where today we are diving into the entire MCAS application. I'm talking disadvantage statement, grade input, extracurricular activities, the MCATs, like everything. You're gonna see it all on my application. And applying to medical school is very long, hard, arduous. It's all of the things, but don't worry, your girl Vix is here to help you out. So come on, let's jump right into this application and get this thing ready for a cycle 2023 applicants. Uh oh, let's go. All right, so here is my MCAS application for the Interclass class 2021. As you can see here, I submitted this application on May 29th at 12.50 in the morning. I am an early riser, which means I go to bed early. And that this is the day that the application is open. But look over here at this process date. I didn't get processed until almost, what's that, three months later? Absolutely ridiculous. And I am completely attributing this to the pandemic. MCAS was shut down, they were backed up. MCAT exams were being canceled, all these things. It was a mess. But anyway, I have redacted all of my personal information because mm, not really any of your business but it's not really gonna help you if you knew it anyway. So let's go to page two. So this is where I talk about my disadvantage statement. So I applied for FAP, which is the fee assistance program, which gave me the rights to pay for a reduced fee for the MCAT. And if you're if it's your first time applying for it, then you also get like free test prep books. I believe it's Princeton Review. I got access to like the question banks and like some flashcards. It was just a lot of different things that I had access to for the fee assistance program but I knew in my heart of hearts that I couldn't apply for that and not write about my disadvantage statement so I just talked about coming from a two-parent home but not really coming from a lot of money and that education is very important to my family even though I went to Chicago public schools where the college readiness score is very low but I was in the international baccalaureate program and I did all these things in high school to prepare me for college but I still felt like I was behind and just talking about how like my family's socioeconomic status has remained the same and finances, they continue to be a stressor. And this is the reason why I want to give back to people who come from similar situations so that they know like they too can make it out of their current situation. And you know, good old Bible days or good old church sayings, like trouble don't last always. The nastiest part. You have to go through, and I had to type all of this in one by one. And coming from Northwestern, we were on a quarter system. So they had to convert all of my hours because each class in Northwestern was just one credit. Unlike other schools where like a class with a lab can be like five credits or something. So they had to convert all of this. So you just really go into your transcripts, you type in the classes, looking at like what course it falls under, you know, math, chemistry, philosophy, English, and then you write down the course name, the course number, and there are some classes I took for Pat Spell, and then like putting in my marks. So y'all can see like my freshman year, it was hard. What was that? Calculus, I got a C minus. General chemistry, I got a C minus. And then this other seminar, I got a B minus. That was the first quarter. Those grades were hard. By the second quarter, I did a little bit better, but chemistry still was a C minus. That transition was very difficult for me. And then once we get down here, like I wound up having to drop some classes. I got a D. Like, let me see if I can highlight this. This right here, y'all, I got a D. I got a D. My freshman year in a psych class. I thought I was going to come in after being a chem major. Maybe I was going to switch to psychology. I got a freaking D. And I worked really, really hard in this class and it still, it just wasn't it for me. So I don't think I took any more psychology classes. But that D at the end of freshman year, I was like, dang. Spoke to an advisor and that's when she told me like, you're going to have to do a post program because these grades that you're getting right now, the C minus is the C minus. And I think by chemistry third quarter, I got a C. This is the C I got by the third quarter. Yeah. Yeah, so these grades are trash. This is just the rest of my grades. As you can see, I got mad C's and <laughs> college so it's true when people say c's get degrees yes they do and apparently they get you into medical school too because hey look at me now 
long. But yes, on this page, like we got a C minus and an intro learning disorders class, neurobiology of communication, C minus, special education class, a C, linguistics, a C, development of infant and toddlers, a C. Mind you, majority of these Cs I just listed are in my major courses, but yeah, they were still hard and I think I just wasn't really interested in all of them. And I'm not gonna lie, some of these classes I thought they were gonna be easy. And it was a lot more work than I was truly trying to sign up for. Moving on. All right, so now we're looking at like junior, senior year. These grades are looking a lot better. We got some A minuses, B pluses, A's, and you know, this page is looking great. But this is when I knew that like maybe I could really do this thing. I had retaken neuro bio of communication, got a B. And on the previous page, you saw I had a C minus, I believe, which is why I had to retake it because since it's a major requirement, you can't be getting C minuses on major classes. Like literally it's unacceptable. But then when we get to I believe my final quarter these are my grades this right here is so the C a pass because I was just ready to leave and they said I could take a pass fail and an A minus <laughs> Took three classes and those are my grades. Yeah, I was wilding. But then, you know, I get to the post back program. I have to take the part two of calculus over the summer before I left. And I got to see, it was really difficult. It was a three week calculus course, which would typically be a 10 week class. I had to do it in three weeks. And I think I was in class every day from eight to 12. Quite ridiculous and a bit insane. And it was extremely intense, obviously. And I just needed to take this course so that I could start my post back program. But I got to see in it. I was kind of disappointed because I had to pay out of pocket like $3,500. It's like, come on now. But in the post-bac program, when I went to Drexel, my grades were looking really well. I'm no longer getting C's in chemistry. You know, I get this B, um, always A's in lab, not too bad. And then the second part of gen chem, I got a B minus, but then I get to biology and I get a freaking C minus. So when I was at Northwestern, I never took bio because I couldn't get past chemistry. I got that C minus, C minus, C. We never advanced. So taking a college level biology course, yeah, it was difficult for me. And that's when I decided, well, not even I decided. I couldn't truly complete that program without finishing biology, but you can't advance if you get a C minus. Once again, coming to kick me in the behind. So I finished pretty strongly with A's and B's. So that's what they say when you take a post back. When you do a post back program, you really wanna strive for these A's and B's because this is your second chance to show that you can't handle the rigor of these intense science courses. But I wound up coming home and I took biology at UIC over the summer and I got B in both courses. They were five credit hours each, which was amazing towards my GPA. But then I take biochemistry at City Colleges because I'm trying to hold these loans off. You know, as long as you a student, you don't have to pay your loans. I paid money to get a C. Look at this. Do you see this C? Now make no sense. But I did take psych again, I got an A. So I was happy about that because Psychology e is on the MCAT. So I was like, all right, we need to do better. So I came back home. This is a little time lapse. Like these classes, the biochem and the psychology, I was taking those while working. So there's a little gap from when I moved back from Philadelphia because I took these bio over the summer of 2015. I worked for two years. I didn't start at med prep until 2017. These grades look good. My first semester, I believe I had like a 3.8 or something GPA. I was working my butt off. Look at that. A minus, a pass, B minus, A, A, A minus. Like what? These grades looking lovely. We're not seeing C's anymore, y'all. This is all at med prep. I was also getting my master of public health. So I was in grad level courses as well, A's and B's, pretty, pretty. Same thing, A's and B's until I get to Rosalind Franklin. I got that C in clinical molecular cell biology, which is why I had to take neuroscience. So that's enough of my grades. But this is showing you freshman year when I told you I was struggling. Yeah, that's a struggle right there. 1.96 was my BCPM which is your science GPA. My GPA of the other classes was a 2.6. So at the end of freshman year, I had a 2.28 GPA. Y'all, I'm coming from high school where I graduated in the top 10 of my class. And on a 5.0 scale, I had like a 4.8 or something. I went from that to a 2.28. Do you know I was devastated? I'm thinking immediately, I will never be a doctor. I ain't getting into nobody's medical school. I'm not about to help the hood out. None of these things because I'm not smart. But that wasn't true. I just did not know how to adapt or adjust to the the rigor or, you know, the difficulty levels of college. Because in high school, I think I was just naturally smart. I didn't really have to work as hard or study hard. But college was a total different beast. Had your girl out here like, oh, 
what we doing. And then clearly they didn't count any of my classes sophomore and junior year. Oh, because I didn't take any science classes. It scared me, like literally scared me away. And then senior year, I took like that neurobio and like a few classes and that was only gave me a 2.0 BCPM. But I was able to finish um, senior year with a 3.28 and I think my overall GPA was like a 3.1. Then I go to do all these post back programs so they're averaging all the classes now. And that's a 3.0 and overall GPA 3.22. And then so they average all of that, the post back with the undergrad and give me a 2.86 BCPM and an overall GPA of a 3.1. And my grad GPA was like, look at that. She was she was doing what she needed to do with that MPH 3.8. But like, don't listen to people when they tell you that you're not gonna get into medical school if you don't have a 3.8 GPA. My BCPM was a 2.86. And where am I right now? About to finish my first semester at medical school. So, you know, like just do the best that you can. Life happens. We are not all afforded the same resources. Although I was not a first generation college student, my parents are not doctors. Like my mother is a psych major and the siblings above me, they also did like kind of soft sciences. <laughs> The point is, nobody was doing what I had already done. I did not know. No one could even teach me or prepare me to study in that way. So, you know, your girl was figuring it out on her own, but those post back programs did help me out. But I will say, like, doing three post back programs is not ideal because that debt that I have is not cute. All right, so these are my MCAT scores. I want to start down here. Look at this day, January 13, 2015. Lord knew I wasn't supposed to take that dang on MCAT. I got a 13 on a scale of, I think it was out of like a 45 or something. My confidence band was 11 to 15, 5%. 95% of people who took the MCAT score are better than me. 95% of people who took the MCAT score are better than me. Yeah, go back to my first video because I'll talk about this, how my mother talked me into taking this dang on test and I knew I wasn't ready. These scores are atrocious. So then I come back and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna study real hard. We're gonna do this. And I took it in September, 2015, 482. Same confidence man, different scores. So new test, still 5%. This is dumb, what do we do? Then I was like, you know, I'm gonna take a Princeton review class, but I'm gonna do a self-paced one because I got this right. No, not even a year later, went up one point, one, Confidence band, the chem fizz jumped two points. Cars, I clearly can't read. It just did nothing. I dropped in bio and 118 is the base level score and one point is like so. All right, went to med prep. I jumped up 10 points. I was like, yeah, we happy about this little 10 points. That's cool. I got those two interviews, but it still wasn't enough, but I was happy with this progress. Three point increase, one point, six points in bio, which was amazing for me. No increase in psych social. And I already told y'all this the last summer when I, I got a tutor, you know, I finally jumped to the 50th percentile range. People tell you, you want to aim for a 500. The 500 shows like, you mastered at least half the test. And in medical school, people ain't getting through this joint with 100% proficiency either. So as long as you can get about at the median range, you're doing pretty good. And as I've stated to y'all before, like there are going to be people on this internet that's going to tell you they got scored a 99th percentile and go them, that is amazing. I'm not that person, but I am blessed and ecstatic to have reached over this hump.